Fellow Toastmasters, tonight is my demonstration speech. How many of you have laser printers at home? How many of you know how to fill with cartridges? When I'm done tonight, you'll all know how. The laser printer is much more, is much cheaper to operate than a inkjet printer. It's good to have, I have them for black and white. I never use the color one, they're fairly complicated. <laughs> this is a typical cartridge. This is for a Hewlett Packard, but it's an off brand supply. Cartridge, fairly complicated. It's a heavy plastic box, a lot of moving parts inside. It's, uh, compartment for laser toner, which is the dry ink, a, cart a compartment for waste toner, it has rollers, air drives, electric heater, runs very hot when it's operating. The cartridges from the original equipment manufacturers, HP, usually have a electric chip on them, and that keeps count of the pages printed and tells you when you're bought out of ink. The cheaper competitors, which I try to use, don't have that. Makes it easier. Generally, what we have to do, and I'll go in greater detail, is make a hole, dump out the waste toner, patch the hole, make a hole to add the toner, add the new toner, patch the hole. And if there's a cartridge, there's a electronic chip, you have to replace the chip. Step by step, a little more detail than that. If you have a handout, that's one provided by one of the suppliers that I have used. One side shows how to add the toner, the other side is how to replace the chip. If when you're operating and your cartridge is getting low and you don't know it, it may start to leave streaks. It means you're almost out. What the, you ought to do is take the cartridge out, put it in a plastic bag, step it both ways, level out, try to level out the remaining dry toner that's in there. That should give you a few more days of operation, but you better plan on getting a replacement or refilling. To never refill the first time is a bit difficult. I'll pass this around to see what it looks like. The toner dust is a very nasty stuff, so it's in a bag. It's not toxic, but it's hard to clean up. It's a very fine pulverized carbon with some other additives to it. It's like black top and powder. So if you spill top and powder and try to clean up, it's just 100 times worse because it's black. I usually work in the bathroom counter. There's good light there and a good counter. Put out a newspaper, put out and rolls and paper towels and dampen that a little bit before I start. You have a waste basket with a plastic bag liner. So your first step is to make a hole to take out the waste toner. This one shows two holes in this particular device. Make the hole, some instructions just say use a sharp object. I wouldn't know how to cut up one of those, very do a nice job. This is what they sell. It's like an electric soldering iron with a disc on the end. Heats up, melts a nice hole about the size of a dime. It takes a plate or four minutes. You have to place the plug in, place the set it, it's hot, and so on. It, 
take some caution. I, re I recommend using it. I've never tried to do it without. You set up your device, turn the hole, take it out. Now you trying to work in your wastebasket. So be very careful with the hole in, put it on the wastebasket, just drain it out, drain it out. Don't go too hard or dust will fly out. Instructions say you don't use a vacuum cleaner. I Visiting hours for adult services are over in 10 minutes. Thank you for your cooperation. I do not use a vacuum cleaner. I think this dust is so fine it'll go through a vacuum cleaner. It's also electric conductive. Then it gets in your motor and it can cause sparking. So I would not use it. Personal choice. I have never used it. After you've dumped out all the waste toner, then you have to patch the hole. This supplier, along with the, with the new toner, this the toner looks like, comes in different size bags. This is dry powder, one has some in it, one's empty. Again, I wouldn't take them without opening the bag. That's for two different types of printers there. You have to add the amount. I use about a half, half, half of a the bottle. They say that, some say to put it in a full bottle. That uh, be over full. That was too full, over right, you have to take some out. I use about half. Then you seal it, just as I did before. Clean off the, the edge very well, put your tape on. If there's no chip, you're finished. If you had the chip, then you have to replace the chip. Turn your paper over, it gives instructions. And these chips, most of them, these come with an adhesive on them, they just paste in. Some other ones I've had, you had to snap them in with a pair of pliers, different designs. I prefer to use ones on the chip. I, I don't need a machine to tell me when it's empty. So, by this time, you've, if it all works right, put it in, and it works. If it doesn't, it's probably a chip problem. I've never had a real problem when you have to clean up the mess. It, this is it's nasty stuff if you spill it. It's not toxic, it's just uh, you have to use wet paper towels to pick it up. Do it in the white towel bathroom, the white doesn't like you in there, but I've never <laughs> had a disaster. So now you know how to do it. If anyone wants to do it, I'm glad to loan you one of the whole burners because I have a, several of them. And you know how to do it. That concludes our presentation. Any questions? <laughs>